<clears throat> Today we will talk about the lycopron, what is called as, what is a concept related to the gene regulation in prokaryotes. So what do you mean by lycopron? This is basically how genes are regulated in prokaryotes. It is one of the concepts which explains the regulation of genes in prokaryotes, for example in H. richa coli. This uh, lag operon concept, it was given by the lag operon concept, it was given by Francis Jacob, Jacob and Monod. And this lag operon concept, it explains the gene regulation in prokaryotes. The experimental stuff which they used for their experiment was Escherichia coli. This uh, lack here we have got lack operon. This lack means lactose. It is a simply a lactose. This lactose it is uh, basically a disaccharide. It is a disaccharide. And it is composed of, it is basically a disaccharide, it is a sugar and it is composed of two monosaccharides. One is glucose and galactose. Both glucose and galactose are monosaccharides. Now uh, there is operon. What do you mean by operon? Operon it is the functional unit of protein synthesis or we can say that an operon is the segment of DNA which controls the synthesis of protein. So operon it is simply the functional unit of protein synthesis or a DNA which controls the protein synthesis. It is a functional unit of protein synthesis functional unit of protein synthesis so this operon it is a functional unit of protein synthesis now we'll talk about the mechanism of this lag operon I told you that this operon it is the functional unit of protein synthesis. Uh, it is the segment of DNA which controls the protein synthesis. So we have got DNA. What is called as operon? Operon is the segment of DNA which controls the protein synthesis. This obviously it will DNA will form RNA and RNA will form the proteins. And these proteins can act as an enzymes. So we have got this process called as when RNA is synthesized from DNA, it is called as transcription. And when protein is synthesized from RNA, it is called as translation. In case of uh, lacopron gene regulation prokaryotes, we have two cases. We have two cases. Case first is that, see, we can explain we have case first and case second. In case first, we have, in both the cases, we can say that we have Escherichia coli, we have petri dish culture medium and in case first we have added the lactose when the lactose is added in the culture medium which contains the which contains the Escherichia coli we find that there is the enzyme synthesis in E. coli but in case second same experimental stuff setup that means culture medium E. coli but we have not added the lactose lactose is absent in case second there is no enzyme synthesis so they want to explain it 
at the molecular level. So we have case first. Uh, in case first, we have this. In case first, suppose this is petri dish. This is petri dish. And in this petri dish, we have culture medium. We have culture medium. And in the culture medium, this is our culture medium. Culture medium. And in the culture medium, we have what? E. coli. These are E. coli. This is their genetic material. These are E. coli. These are E. coli. These are simply E. coli. These are E. coli. Then what we have, what we did in the case first, the lactose was added. Lactose added. The substrate that is lactose added. When the lactose is added, that is lactose added. This is lactose, lactose, lactose added in the culture medium. The lactose molecules which act as a substrate in the culture medium. We find that we find that when we edit the lactose in the culture medium having the E. coli, uh, we find that enzyme synthesis occurs. Enzyme synthesis. Enzyme synthesis occurs in the E. coli. E. coli synthesizes the enzymes. It means that genes are in a switch on state. Genes switch on. That means genes are expressed. When we say that the genes are expressed, it means that they synthesize the product. So we can say that the genes are switch on. So genes are expressed. Then in the another case, what we what they did, we have same, we have culture medium. This is petri dish. This is petri dish. This is petri dish. This is culture medium. This is culture medium. And here we have E. coli. E. coli. E. coli. E. coli. E. coli. These are E. coli. This is culture medium. This is culture medium. In the culture medium, lactose is absent. Lactose absent. No, no lactose added in the culture medium. So it means that when no lactose added, no enzyme synthesis. No enzyme synthesis and genes are switch off. Genes switch off. That means genes are unexpressed. Unexpressed. Genes have not expressed. So when we say that genes have expressed, it means that they have synthesized the product. And when we say that genes are unexpressed, no product synthesis occurs. That means no transcription occurs when the genes are in unexpressed state. So, so we have this genes are uh, switch off that is in unexpressed state. This was in the case, case second. This uh, Jacob and Monod wants to explain it at a molecular level that means when the lactose is present in the culture medium enzyme synthesis occurs and when lactose is absent in the culture medium 
no enzyme synthesis occurs. So they proposed the concept of lac operon, what is called as this lac operon is also called as lactose operon. This what do you mean by lac? It is lac means lactose. It is a disaccharide. This uh, lactose it is the source of energy and carbon for the E. coli. The lactose is the, it is the source of energy and carbon for the E. coli. How they explain it? They explain it like this. We have the concept like this. For example, this is an E. coli. This is an E. coli. E. coli. Obviously, it is the DNA. This is the DNA in an E. coli. When the lactose is added, we are talking about the case first when lactose is added so lactose is a disaccharide lactose added in the membrane in the membrane of E. coli there is already a protein present that is called as membrane protein what is called as permease this is permease this permease acts as a gate a door for the entry of these for the entry of these lactose molecules lactose it is a disaccharide lactose molecule so lactose will enter here via this is permease it is already present in a membrane a membrane it is a membrane protein permease so this lactose will enter here and in the bacterial cell it undergoes conformational change it gets transformed it gets converted into allo lactose it gets converted into allo lactose so allo lactose is the actual inducer in case of lac operon and lac operon is an inducible operon so we can see that this this allo lactose is then converted into monosaccharides glucose and galactose by an enzyme that is called as beta galactosidase beta galactosidase it will get converted into glucose and galactose so it means that this arrow indicates that genes are expressed expressed so it means that when the lactose is present when the lactose added externally, we find that this uh, lactose triggers the expression of these genes. The genes are expressed and this uh, lactose which gets transformed into allo lactose that gets then degraded, broke down by the beta galactose into glucose and galactose. So now we will explain it at the molecular level. In case of uh, E. coli, when we talk about the E. coli, it is the E. coli DNA. This is E. coli DNA. This is E. coli DNA. This E. coli DNA, it has what is called as operon. This operon, I told you that it is the functional unit of protein synthesis and this or we can say that operon it is the segment of DNA which controls protein synthesis and in and in E. coli it is composed of S O P that means S means structural gene O means operator gene and P means promoter gene. You can remember it SOP. That means S indicates designated structural gene, O operator gene, P promoter gene. So we have structural genes, we have structural genes, we have operator gene. 
So I can explain it like this. We have operon here. This operon it is composed of three components. One is one is structural genes. Structural genes. What is called as cystrons. And then we have O means operator gene. O operator gene and then promoter gene. P promoter gene. This structural genes are of three types. That is lag A, lag Y and Z. Lag A, lag Y and lag Z. So we have got lag A, lag Y and lag Z. So in a bacterial DNA, this operon is composed of lag A, lag Y and lag Z. So this is lag A, lag Y and lag Z. Then we have got operator gene. This is bacterial DNA. Lag A, lag Y and lag Z. Then these are cystrons. What are called as cystrons? These are called as cystrons. Yes, structural genes. Then we have got operator gene. Then promoter gene. In addition to these, we have got regulator gene. What is called as I gene. And then this is the promoter for regulator gene. This uh, lag, now we'll talk about the lag A, lag Y, lag Z, operator gene, promoter gene, this uh, regulator gene and promoter of regulator gene. This lag A, it codes for the enzyme. This lag A, it, this codes for the enzyme that is transacetylase. Transacetylase. It codes for the enzyme transacetylase. Then lag Y, it codes for the enzyme permease. It codes for the enzyme permease. And lag Z, it codes for the enzyme beta galactosidase. Beta galactosidase. So this lag A, it codes for the enzyme transacetylase. Lag Y, it codes for the enzyme permease. And lag Z, it codes for the enzyme beta galactosidase. This lag A, it codes for the enzyme transacetylase. Lag A, codes for the enzyme transacetylase. Lag Y, codes for the enzyme permease. And lag Z, it codes for the enzyme beta galactosidase. Then we have got operator gene. This operator gene, then we have got operator gene, this operator gene, operator gene controls the, operator gene it controls the expression of structural genes, just cystrons. This operator gene controls expression of structural genes. Then we have got another gene that is promoter gene. This promoter gene, it is the binding site for RNA polymerase. It is binding site for RNA polymerase. It is a binding site for RNA polymerase. Then we have got another one. So this operator gene, then promoter, then I gene. I gene. I gene is simply called as a regulator gene. This is a regulator gene. And this regulator gene, this regulator gene, it synthesizes a protein that is called as a repressor protein. It synthesizes a protein that is called as a repressor protein. And PI, that is promoter of regulator gene. It is the binding site for RNA polymerase. Promoter is always the binding site for RNA polymerase. Now, how this... 
So we have X split like this. This is called as operon. Regulator gene is not a part of an operon. So this is bacterial DNA. We have structural genes. Cystrons are also called structural genes. We have lag A, lag Y, and lag Z. Lag A codes for transacetylase. Lag Y codes for permease, and lag Z it codes for beta galactosidase. This operator gene it controls the expression of structural genes or cystrons. Then promoter it is a binding site for RNA polymerase. This SOP structural gene operator gene and this is called as operon. This is called as operon. So this is an operon. These are structural genes. Now how this? How? What is the mechanism for the lac operon or lactose operon? We'll explain like this. Now, one, now in the case first. Suppose we will discuss case first. Case first, that means lactose is added. So we will take this. This is. Bacterial DNA, the bacterial DNA, lag A, Y, and Z, operator gene, promoter gene, this is regulator gene, and this is promoter of regulator gene. Promoter of regulator gene. Suppose this is E. coli membrane, E. coli membrane. E. coli membrane. We have added. We have added in the case first. We have added lactose. Lactose is added from here. Suppose we have added lactose. This is lactose. Lactose. These are lactose molecules. Lactose molecules. These are lactose molecules. Lactose acts as a substrate, as an inducer in the lac operon because lac operon is an inducible operon. It is an inducible operon. These are lactose molecules. And this is, I told you that this is permease. This permease, it is a membrane protein, and this permease, it is already present in the some amount of permease is already present in the E. coli membrane, which helps in the entry of this lactose into the into the E. coli. So lactose gets entry into the E. coli. This lactose, this is lactose, it has entered into the E. coli. Lactose has entered into the E. coli. Lactose has in entered into the E. coli. Now we'll see this is lactose. 
and when it gets entered into the when it enters into the E. coli, it gets it gets under it undergoes conformational change and it gets converted to allolactose. This is allolactose. So allolactose it is an inducer in the lycopron. So we know that this I gene it synthesizes what it undergoes transcription. And it synthesizes mRNA. Now the mRNA is called as here. mRNA is called as repressor mRNA. Repressor mRNA. This is I is the regulator gene. It is transcription occurs. It forms the repressor mRNA. And then repressor mRNA forms the repressor protein. This is a repressor protein. This is a repressor protein. This repressor protein has high affinity for the for the allolactose. As a result, this repressor protein it gets attached. It gets attached to the to the allolactose. Now this repressor has got high affinity with the And it forms a complex that is called as that is allolactose repressor complex. This is allolactose repressor complex. This repressor protein it has high affinity with the allolactose as a result of that these two get linked and they form a complex what is called as allolactose repressor complex now what will happen obviously this is binding site for RNA polymerase promoter it is the binding site for RNA polymerase This promoter it is a binding site for RNA polymerase. Now this uh, allolactose it cannot join to the operator gene. It cannot join to the operator gene. As I told you that this is promoter and this is the binding site for what? It is the binding site for RNA polymerase. Binding site for RNA polymerase. This promoter it is a binding site for RNA polymerase. Now this allolactose repressor complex it cannot bind to the operator gene. As a result of that, the road for this RNA polymerase is open. This RNA polymerase can easily move ahead. It can easily move ahead and it can cause the transcription of the structural genes or cystrons because there is no blockade of road at the operator gene operator gene is open that means this RNA polymerase can easily go ahead and it can cause the transcription of the structural genus so here what will occur transcription of the structural genus so it will form a polycystronic mRNA it will form what a polycystronic mRNA polycystronic mRNA is that type of mRNA which has information for the formation of several proteins. This is polycystronic mRNA. That means this is polycystronic mRNA. That means this mRNA synthesizes several proteins. It's a single mRNA which can synthesize several proteins or several which these several proteins can act as enzymes. Obviously, this is transcription when mRNA is synthesized from structural genes. This is called transcription. And when <coughs> proteins are synthesized, these are proteins. These are, for example, proteins. Proteins. 
these proteins will act as enzymes so this is called as translation so transcription and translation same is the case here this is also translation so lag a will synthesize protein or that protein will act as enzyme that is called as transesterase transesterase this is what is called as permease and this is what is called as beta galactosidase the main enzyme for uh, the degradation for the main enzyme for the degradation of lactose into glucose and galactose is beta galactosidase beta galactosidase this is how genes genes are expressed gene genes on on it means that here when the genes are on lactose will get degraded into by means of enzyme beta galactosidase to c days this disaccharide will get converted into glucose plus galactose galact this lactose will serve as a source of energy and carbon in e coli it is being degraded by the enzyme beta galactosidase this uh, uh, permease it acts as a membrane protein permease is a membrane protein permease it is a membrane protein permease it is a membrane protein this is membrane protein uh, which helps in the entry of what lactose molecules into the e coli then we have got transesterase this transesterase it transfers the acetyl group from acetyl coenzyme a to lactose molecules for their so that these lactose molecules will get easily broken down so this is what is called as how the genes are expressed that means so in this case the genes are expressed when lactose is added the enzyme synthesis occurs in the e coli this we have when the lactose is added we have added the lactose genes are synthesized in e coli how these genes are synthesized this lactose it enters into the e coli and then in this lactose get, undergoes conformational change it gets converted into allolactose this allolactose it uh, then binds with the repressor protein which is synthesized by the regulator gene and this complex cannot bind to the operator gene as a result of that operator gene is free uh, and uh, the promote, promoter we know that this is the promoter region or promoter gene it is the binding site for the RNA polymerase this RNA polymerase when it binds to the uh, promoter it can easily move ahead it can easily go ahead uh, there because the road is not blocked at the at the operator gene operator gene is free it does not have any any kind of hindrance this operator this or any polymerase do not have any kind of hindrance at the operator gene therefore it can easily transcribe the structural genes it will form the mrna that is called as polycystronic mrna polycystronic mrna is that type of mrna which has the information for the synthesis of several proteins for the synthesis of several enzymes it is the character for the uh, bacterial bacteria that they have got polycystronic genes or polycystronic mRNA while as in case of eukaryotes they have got monocystronic mRNA now this uh, we know that uh, this is uh, structural genes structural genes are three types a y and z a synthesizes transesterase b synth y synthesizes permease and b z synthesizes uh, beta galactosidase so a lag a lag y and lag z these enzymes are responsible for the degradation of disaccharide lactose into glucose and galactose then this uh, lactose which gets transformed which gets converted into glucose galactose it serves as a source of energy and carbon for the e coli and this is uh, where how the genes are switch on genes are in the switch on state now uh, there is another that means case second this this we have discussed case first now we will discuss about the case this is now we'll discuss about the case
we'll discuss about the case second that means no lactose present so this is case second no lactose so this is case second no lactose present no enzyme synthesis this is case second that means in the culture medium no lactose present no enzyme synthesis genes switch off state genes unexpressed same is the case we have got e coli e coli obviously this is membrane protein or what is called as permease lactose absent as i told you that this permease membrane protein it is already present at a little bit amount of permease is already present in the membrane of e coli rest the same we have got this lag a y and z then operator gene we have got sop sop that means structural gene operator gene and promoter gene these are structural genes then we have got operator gene promoter gene we have regulator gene and we have we have operate we have promoter for regulator gene this is uh, promoter of regulator gene and this promoter it is it is a binding site for rna polymerase obviously this i gene it will synthesize it will undergo transcription and it will synthesize repressor mrna repressor mrna will undergo translation it will undergo transcription first when there is transcription of uh, regulator gene it will form the repressor mrna then the repressor mrna will undergo translation it will form a repressor protein this is repressor protein this as lactose is absent lactose lactose absent this repressor protein has high affinity for the operator this has high affinity for the operator this will bind with the operator that means uh, this repressor protein this repressor protein binds to operator when lactose is absent when lactose is absent although or in a polymerase will bind here this is rna polymerase now rna polymerase will bind at the promoter site but it cannot but it cannot go ahead because the road for rna polymerase is blocked at the operator site operator gene therefore no transcription as we know that rna polymerase is the main enzyme for the transcription for the rna synthesis so there is no transcription no translation no translation no enzyme synthesis when the lactose is absent so we can say that uh, when the lactose is absent this repressor protein will bind to the operator gene and when will bind to the operator gene as a result of that this rna polymerase cannot do the trans transcription of the structural genes so no transcription no translation and no enzyme synthesis so we have written that when lactose is absent no enzyme synthesis genes are switch off that means in this case genes unexpressed that means the, we say that genes are unexpressed that means they have not synthesized the product 
this was regarding the mechanism of the lac operon how it works now we can see show it by means of a graph it by means of a graph for example we have got horizontal axis that is x axis and vertical axis that is y axis will take time period for example 5 minutes this is in minutes 5 10 15 20 25 30 and here enzyme activity enzyme activity during in lac operon enzyme activity when the lactose is absent when the lactose is absent when the lactose is absent enzyme activity no enzyme activity when the lactose is absent so what we did no lactose is added lactose when we add the lactose the enzyme activity increases the activity of the enzyme increases so it would be like this that means it is the this graph indicates the induction of enzyme synthesis by addition of substrate that is lactose that means this graph shows that when the lactose is absent enzyme activity is very low when the lactose is absent no enzyme activity but as you have as you have added the substrate as you have added the lactose when the lactose is added the activity of the enzyme in the lac operon it has increased and after a certain uh, extent it has increased after a certain time it has increased after that it remains constant so this indicates that this uh, lactose induces the this graph indicates that this lactose induces the synthesis of enzymes during the lac operon so lactose is an inducer this is lac operon is an inducible operon so we can say that lac operon it is an inducible operon so this is induction this indicates induction that means addition of substrate addition of lactose has induced the synthesis of enzymes so we say that lac operon is an inducible operon Another important point is that it is negatively inducible operon. Negatively inducible operon. Why it is called as negatively inducible operon? Because the product of regulator gene inhibits the transcription of the structural gene. In case of O lac operon, in lac operon, in lac operon, this uh, in lac operon, the product of structural gene in lac operon the product of structural gene it inhibits it inhibits transcription of structural genes so we call that lac operon is a negatively inducible operon because the product of uh, regulator gene that is repressor protein inhibits the transcription of structural genes if it if uh, in case of positive operon when we say that uh, in case of positive operon the product of regulator gene promotes the transcription structure but in case of lac operon the product of regulator gene inhibits the transcription of structural genes so we say that uh, lac operon is a negatively inducible operon and this lac operon it operates mostly in catabolic pathways Cat Bolic pathways. This lac operon operates mostly in catabolic pathways. As in case of uh, lactose is being degraded, it is being 
catabolized into glucose and galactose so it mostly operates in uh, in a in a catabolic pathways another important thing is that lac operon normally remains in a switch off state it remains in a switch off state this lac operon normally remains in a switch off state what it means it means that generally genes are unexpressed unexpressed they do not express they do not synthesize enzymes they do not synthesize protein but as you have added the lactose this their expression starts they start expressing so we can say that you addition of substrate addition of lactose has induced the synthesis of enzymes generally these uh, genes are in a switch off state but when you have added the lactose they start expressing they start synthesizing the mrna and 